OK, let's talk about next week. We're going to begin reading Paradise Lost. Now, if you thought the play was hard, you're in for a surprise. Paradise Lost is not just uh, 17th century English. It is 17th century English written as if it were even older. The idea is that the older kind of English is more literary, is more uh, formal. So when John Milton sets out to write what he hopes will be an important work of English literature, he of course chooses a style to fit the importance of the work. So Paradise Lost can be very hard to read. Uh, I want to give you some help before you begin. First of all, I heard some of you in the break say, why is it getting thicker and thicker? And one reason is because you don't have to read everything. You see on the first page, I have drawn an arrow to show where you can where you should begin reading. And then two pages later, there is an arrow showing you where to stop reading. So you don't have to read all of it. You only have to read the parts in between the arrows. Secondly, uh, the key to reading Paradise Lost is to remember that every sentence's grammar is perfect. You just have to find the subject and the verb and the object. But once you find them and you put them in the right order, uh, it follows very strict grammar rules. For example, let's look at page 1835. 1835. Line 110. That glory never shall his wrath or might extort from me. In this sentence, the subject, well, let's start from the verb extort. There's only one main verb, extort. Extort means uh, uh, so to extort from me something, right? If you extort someone, you want something. So what is the object of a extort? Something, uh, and you have the word never. So something that he will never give up. So it should be a good thing. So the only good thing in this sentence is glory, yao. So we have the second half of the sentence. Extort glory from me. Never extort glory from me. So the only... Uh, ver the only noun left must be the subject. Wrath or might is the subject. So the sentence goes, his wrath or might, shall never extort that glory from me. So you have to, to figure out the main verb and then figure out the object or the subject, and then the rest of the sentence will become clear. Uh, another thing to remember is that the language is very old, so many words that look familiar may have a different meaning. For example, if we turn back to page 1834, Line 94. The force of those dire arms. Dire means, uh, today it means uh, dangerous. Uh, we can use that meaning for now. So the, the force or power of those dangerous arms. I'm sure nobody's arms are really that dangerous. So the word arms must mean something different. Um, the meaning of this word is still used today. For example, in the Second Amendment to the US Constitution, the right to bear arms. 
So arms means weapon or weapons. Uh, but if arms means weapons, then dire cannot mean dangerous because all weapons are dangerous. So dire must mean something else. And in this sentence, dire means threatening. So the force of those dire arms in modern English means the power of those threatening weapons. So at the beginning of the semester, I suggested you use an English to English dictionary. This is why you will sometimes need older meanings to these words. Uh, now, our textbook tries to help you as much as possible. On the right hand side, you have explanations of the hardest words. And at the bottom, you have explanations of uh, sometimes hard sentences, sometimes uh, ideas that might be unfamiliar. If you need more help, I have put something on Moodle. So on Moodle, you have a file called Paradise Lost Introduction. I'm not going to give you a paper copy, but if you're interested, uh, you can take a look at this. What this is, is two things. First is the introduction from the textbook. This may be helpful, maybe not. But the second thing, it will definitely be helpful. When John Milton first wrote Paradise Lost, he received many comments and feedback from his readers. One of the feedbacks said, uh, this whole thing is so confusing. Can you give a summary of what happens? And so he did. For the second edition, which is the one we're reading, at the beginning of each book or chapter, he added something called the argument. And the argument is simply a summary. So this introduction includes the summary of all 12 chapters. So if you get lost, you're not quite sure what's going on, you can take a look at this file and look at the summary for that part of the poem. Uh, hopefully that will give you some direction uh, and to help you understand what is going on. And if all else fails, I'm sure there's a Chinese version somewhere that you can take a look at. Um, but remember that translations are not always accurate. So what is Paradise Lost? In your freshman year, uh, you learned about Homer and the Iliad and the Odyssey and these ancient epic poems. Those poems are the foundation of Western literature, not just because of the story they tell, but also because of how it tells the story. The idea of a long poem told by a poet to an audience about ancient, mythical, important events. Epic poetry. So after Homer, each new culture has uh, always tried to produce its own kind of epic. In uh, Italy, you have epics. In Norway and Iceland, you have epics. And in English, you have Paradise Lost. Usually epics talk about the beginning of the culture's history. But John Milton went further. He didn't stop at English history. He went all the way back to talk about the beginning of human history. Of course, he was religious. So the beginning of human history is the beginning of the Bible. At the beginning of the Bible, God created humans, created the earth. And then one of his angels starts thinking he doesn't want to obey God. He also is very powerful. Why should he obey someone else? And he tries to take over heaven and he fails. God casts this angel down to hell and his name, of course, is Satan, Satan. 
Satan and his followers are in hell and they're thinking, how should we take revenge on God? He's too strong to fight, so we have to find some other way. And then they hear that God has created this place called Earth and on the Earth he has placed this thing called humans that he loves very much. So what better way to take revenge than to destroy something that God loves very much? And so Satan makes a plan to try to make humans disobey God and to put some distance between God and the creature that he loves. And of course, we know that in the Bible, Satan succeeds and Adam and Eve are kicked out of the Garden of Eden to walk the earth and farm and give birth painfully. That's basically the story of Paradise Lost. But unlike other epic poems, for example, in the Iliad, we follow Achilles, hero of the Greeks. In the Odyssey, we follow Odysseus, another Greek hero. But in Paradise Lost, the main character is Satan, who of course is not a hero. He is the evil angel. And so what this means is that for much of the poem, we are following the thoughts and feelings of someone that we should not agree with, someone that we should not support. And we know that if we focus on Satan, what we're focusing on is his desire for revenge, his planning, how he thinks, how he convinces other angels to follow him. So in fact, much of Paradise Lost is a test for the reader. When you hear Satan give his speeches and explain himself, will you find yourself agreeing with him? Or can you see where he is wrong? And only in the second half of the poem do we then shift over to earth, uh, first to heaven and God, and then we go to earth and Adam and Eve, and we follow the story of the Bible. So we will be spending three weeks on Paradise Lost. The first week before next week, Please read up to, uh, let's see what the syllabus says. I can't remember. We're going to read most of the first half, but only some selections. Uh, one to five. Okay, so please read up to page, uh, up to the end of the selection from book five. So that would be page. 1934, 1930. The end of. Uh, so read up to page 1930. Sorry, up to page 1927. Please read up to page 1927. Uh, the next week we will read up to the middle of book nine and then we will have a week of holiday and then the final week, not holiday, the week of um, midterm exams. And then we will read the rest of the poem. Uh, and then we will take our own midterm exam. Oh, we do have a holiday. OK, so this week read up to the end of page 1927, then holiday, then read up to the middle of book nine, then midterm week, and then we finish the poem and uh, you guys will do the midterm online. OK, do you have questions? Yes. Yes, so in this class, the midterm exam will be a take home computer online exam. You will have one week to finish the exam. I will release the question after class on week 10. Uh, so on week 10, we will do the class discussion and then I will introduce uh, the next unit persuasion and then I will explain how to take the exam. 
and we will discuss the exam question together. So week 10 is kind of important. You probably don't want to miss that week. Uh, and then you will have one week's time to finish the exam online. OK, OK, good. Other questions? OK, so if you don't have other questions, let's jump back to this week. Tis pity she's a whore. Um, this week is Acts 4 and 5, right? Right? OK, so Act 4, Scene 1, page 699. Uh, we already talked about the first two lines. The friar says, we finished the marriage ceremony. Now let's eat. Then he says, line three, such fit repasts are pleasing to the saints who are your guests, though not with mortal eyes to be beheld. So he's saying, because marriage is a holy rite, it's a holy ceremony, so not only are you here, but the saints and God are also here. And so to eat and be happy at this time will also uh, make the saints happy. Even though you can't see them. Not with mortal eyes. Long prosper in this day, you happy couple to each other's joy. So be happy together forever, basically. Serenzo, Father, your prayer is heard. The hand of goodness hath been a shield for me against my death. Ha ha. He thinks he's not going to die. Uh, so he's saying like God has protected him from death so far. And more to bless me hath enriched my life with this most precious jewel. Such a prize as earth hath not another like to this. This is the only such jewel, only such prize in all the earth. So notice he's not saying a wonderful person to love. He's calling Annabella a jewel, a prize, like an object. Then he turns to her, cheer up, my love. So apparently Annabella is not happy, right? He has to tell her to cheer up. Then he turns to the crowd and gentlemen, my friends, rejoice with me in mirth. So be happy with me. This day will crown with lusty cups to Annabella's health. Crown here means finish or to, to give the high point. So we'll end this day by toasting Annabella's health. Lusty cups just means full cups, cups full of wine. Giovanni aside, so he's talking to himself. Oh, torture, he feels tortured. Were the marriage yet undone, which means if the marriage could be un, uh, had not yet finished. Uh, or, you know, I wish that the marriage was not completed. Ear means before. Ear, I'd endure this sight to see my love clipped by another, so chosen by another. Or, sorry, my love clipped is shortened, cut off by another. I would dare confusion and stand the horror of 10,000 deaths. So if I could stop, if I could undo the wedding, I would risk going to hell to undo the wedding. Vasquez sees him. Are you not well, sir? And he says, prithee, fellow. Prithee means please. Fellow, wait. I need not thy officious diligence. Here the word wait does not mean to wait a little bit. Here the word wait means to serve. Remember, Vasquez is a servant. So why is he here? He's here to give everybody food and drinks. He's the waiter. So he tells him, do your job. Uh, I don't need your uh, concern. So Giovanni's, you know, 
uh, not a happy person to be around right now. Florio, Signor Donado, come, you must forget your late mishaps and drown your cares in wine. Uh, so, Sir Donato, his mishaps, of course, refers to the fact that his nephew, Berghetto, has been killed. Uh, so, Florio says, forget about that, come get drunk. Saranzo calls, Vesquez, my lord, reach me that weighty bowl. Weighty means heavy, it also means important. Here, Brother Giovanni, here's to you. Your turn comes next, though now a bachelor. Here's to your sister's happiness and mine. So he toasts Giovanni. Drinks and then offers him the bowl. Uh, we talked about this. Giovanni says, I cannot drink. What? Twill indeed offend me. Twill just means it will. Annabella says, pray do not urge him if he be not willing. If he doesn't want to drink, don't force him. Then the stage directions say oboes, which means music. Florio, how now, which means what's going on? What noise is this? So what sound is this? Vesquez, oh, sir, I had forgot to tell you. Certain young maidens of Parma, in uh, young maidens is young ladies. In honor to Madame Annabella's marriage, have sent their loves to her in a mask. A mask is a masked ball. It's a kind of dance. Um, it's, it's a kind of dance where everybody wears masks and pretends that they don't know who each, who each other person is. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, have sent their loves to her in a mask for which they humbly crave your patience and silence. Uh, so it's a kind of performance. Sorenzo, we are much bound to them so much the more as it comes unexpected. To be much bound to someone means we are grateful. We thank them. Uh, and he says, uh, all the more, so much the more as it comes unexpected. So it's a surprise which makes it happier and therefore we are even more grateful. It's a very polite thing to say. Guide them in. Now, because this is a play full of conspiracies and secrets and murder, we know that this is no ordinary performance. Enter Hippolyta and ladies in white robes all masked with garlands of willows. A garland is uh, flowers that you put on your head. Willow, uh, liu shu, liu shu zhi. Music and a dance. So at this point on stage, these women are dancing around. And then after they finish, Saranzo says, thanks, lovely virgins. Now might we but know to whom we have been beholding for this love, we shall acknowledge it. So thank you. Now, if you can tell us who you are, we can thank you in person. Hippolyta, yes, you shall know. And then she takes off her mask. What think you now? Omnis, omnis means everybody. So everybody shouts, Hippolyta! And she says, Tis she, which means it is I, Hippolyta. Be not amazed. Uh, amazed here means scared. Don't be scared. Nor blush, young lovely bride. I come not to defraud you of your man. So at this point, she sees Annabella blushing. And so she assumes that Annabella thinks that she, Hippolyta, is here to steal Saranzo. So she says, I come not to defraud you of your man. I'm not here to steal your guy. To Saranzo. Tis now no time to reckon up the talk what Parma long hath rumored of us both. This is not the time to discuss the gossip that the city of Parma has long talked about regarding us two. 
Let rash reports run on. Let that gossip keep running. Keep uh, circulating, keep spreading. The breath that vents it will, like a bubble, break itself at last. So she's comparing gossip to a bubble. Sooner or later, it will break and people will stop talking about them. To Annabella. But now to you, sweet creature, lend us your hand. The S is us, which means me. Lend me your hand. Give me your hand. Perhaps it hath been said that I would claim some interest in Saranzo, now your lord. Uh, so some interest, of course, means like want to marry him. Uh, now your lord, lord here means husband. What I have right to do, his soul knows best. So she doesn't deny that she wants to marry Saranzo. She says what I have a right to do, what I should be able to do, he knows. So what is the truth? Go ask him. Don't go ask. Don't ask me. But in my duty to your noble worth, sweet Annabella, and my care of you, which means my love for you, my uh, polite love for you. Here, take Saranzo. Take this hand from me. I'll once more join what by the Holy Church is finished and allowed. So what is she doing? She's taking Annabella's hand and giving it to Saranzo as if she has the power to marry these two people. The idea is that uh, because Saranzo used to be her lover, they had an agreement or an engagement, but then Saranzo ignored her. So by the law, Hippolyta has the right to claim Saranzo as her husband and therefore to take him away from Annabella. So by putting Annabella's hand in Saranzo's hand, she's saying, I give up my right. I allow you to marry freely. I will not stop you. And so after she has done this, she says, have I done well? Which means, have I done the right thing? And Saranzo says, you have too much engaged us. This is, of course, a pun. The first meaning is uh, we have already been married and you're marrying us again a second time. It's too much. The second meaning is, of course, uh, Annabella was engaged to him and Hippolyta was also engaged to him. So by declaring this situation, she has given Saranzo two engagements, which is too much. Hippolyta. One thing more, that you may know my single charity. So I want to add one more point so you know that I really mean uh, my kindness. I'm serious about this. And she says, freely, I here remit all interest I e'er could claim and give you back your vows. So she formally gives up her claim on Saranzo. I remit all interest I ever could claim. And to confirm it, reach me a cup of wine. So at this point, she talks to like a servant to ask for a cup of wine. Uh, and so to confirm uh, that I have discarded my claim, my Lord Saranzo, in this draft, I drink long rest tea. So to confirm that she means it, she toasts him and drinks wine as a symbol of a promise. And then she says secretly, aside, secretly to Vasquez, look to it, Vasquez. So like, go do what we had talked about. Remember, Vasquez is pretending to help her. So go do it, Vasquez. Or, you know, make sure this is correct. There's nothing wrong. And then Vasquez replies to her secretly, fear nothing. He gives her a poisoned cup and she drinks. Now, if you're watching this as a performance, you don't know that the cup is poisoned. You think it's the right cup. 
remember that. You're, you don't know that she drank from a poison cup. Saranzo, Hippolyta, I thank you and will pledge this happy union as another life. So I will treat being married like a new life. I will, it's like I will start my life over again. So like forget all of my past mistakes. I will become a new person. Wine there. So he's also calling for wine. But Vasquez says, you shall have none. Neither shall you pledge her, so you will also not toast her either. Hippolyta, how? Which means what? Vasquez, know now, mistress she-devil. Mistress just is the woman form of master. So a man is a master, a woman is a mistress. Know now, mistress she-devil, your own mischievous treachery hath killed you. Your own conspiracy has killed you. I must not marry you. So in the deal that Hippolyta made with Vasquez, if Vasquez would help Hippolyta kill Saranzo, Hippolyta would marry Vasquez and give him a noble title and give him money. But here Vasquez says, I must not marry you. And so Hippolyta says, villain, which means basically it's calling him a bastard. You bastard, villain. And now everybody is confused. So Omnis, everybody, what's the matter? Uh, now, in an actual performance, they probably won't shout what's the matter at the same time, right? It's probably general confusion on stage. Vizquez, foolish woman, thou art, which means you are, now like a firebrand that hath kindled others and burned thyself. So you are the a starter fire. You have lit other people on fire, but now you have burned yourself. Tropo spirare in Ghana. Uh, which the footnote says, too much hoping deceived. By hoping for too much, you have tricked yourself. Thy vain hope hath deceived thee, which is the English translation, I guess. Vain here also has two meanings. One is selfish. The other meaning is useless. Your selfish and useless hope has deceived yourself. Thou art but dead. The word but here means basically or only. You have nothing but your own death. If thou hast any grace, pray. So here grace is the religious idea. If you are, if it is possible for you to confess your sins and enter heaven, do it now, confess now, because you're going to die soon. Uh, of course, when he says this, he's not really hoping that she gets into heaven. He's simply telling her, you're going to die now. Hippolyta, monster. The word monster is also very interesting. Uh, today, it just means like a scary creature. But in those days, in a religious meaning, the word monster is a creature that is not created by God. So she's also calling him uh, like separate from God. So like evil, basically. Vizquez, die in charity for shame. So you say you're being kind, but now you will die out of shame. This thing of malice, this woman, malice means evil. So this evil thing, this woman, had privately, means secretly, corrupted me with promise of marriage under this po politic reconciliation. So politic means like diplomatic, surface, appearance. Uh, reconciliation, hejie to poison my lord while she might laugh at his confusion on his marriage day. I promised her fair, which means I made her the promise. But I knew what my reward should have been. Now, the word should does not mean ought to be, does not mean ingai. The word should is, it just means would, would have been. Uh, in older English, uh, if it's the first person, di yuan you don't say will, you say shall. So if it's 
uh, I, you don't say would. You don't say I would. You say I should. So I knew what my reward would have been and would willingly have spared her life, but that I was acquainted with the danger of her disposition. So I learned how evil she is and now have fitted her a just point payment in her own coin. So what she tried to do to you, I have done to her. I have paid her in her own coin. So he's saying, I could have not killed her, but after I learned how evil she is, I couldn't just let her go. I had to stop her evil. There she is. She hath yet and end thy days in peace. Vile woman, evil woman. As for life, there's no hope. Think not on it. Don't hope for life. There's no hope for you. And then everybody says, wonderful justice. Uh, and even Richard Detto says, heaven, thou art righteous. So heaven, God is just, is right. Hippolyta, oh, tis true. I feel my minute coming. Had that slave, Vesquez, kept promise, oh, my torment. Thou, uh, so, oh, my torment is said to herself. Thou this hour hadst died, Soranzo. So if Vasquez had followed his promise, Soranzo would be dead. Heat above hellfire. So now she, she's describing the pain inside her because of the poison. It's hotter than hell. Yet ere I pass away, before I die, and then again, cruel, cruel flames, the poison inside her. Take here my curse among you. May thy bed of marriage be a rack unto thy heart. A rack is a torture device where you, you put a person's hands up here and legs down here and you pull in opposite directions. So she's saying that I curse your marriage will bring you pain. Burn blood and boil in vengeance. Oh, my heart, my flames intolerable. Again, uh, her pain. Mayst, mayst mean is another curse. Mayst thou live to father bastards. So may your children be missing their father. So in other words, may you die before you see your child. May her womb, zigong, Bring forth monsters and die together in your sins, hated, scorned, and unpitied. Oh, oh, she dies. So that is, a, those are some very strong curses. Florio, was e'er so vile a creature? Richardetto, here's the end of lust and pride. Annabella, it is a fearful sight. Storenzo. Vesquez, I know thee now a trusty servant and never will forget thee. I know I can trust you now. Come, my love, now talking to Annabella. We'll home, which means we'll go home, and thank the heavens for this escape. Father and friends, we must break up this mirth, which means happiness. It is too sad a feast. Donato, bear hence the body. So he's ordering the servants to take away Hippolyta's body. The friar secretly says to Giovanni, aside, here's an ominous change, ominous, 凶造的, 不吉祥的, unlucky. Mark this, my Giovanni, and take heed. So pay attention. I fear the event. I'm afraid for what might happen soon. That marriage seldom's good where the bride banquet so begins in blood. Any marriage that begins with death is not a good marriage. Exeunt. Everybody leaves the stage. Uh, okay, let's stop here. Uh, so next, before next week, please read Paradise Lost up to page 1927. And if you're confused, you can look at the introduction. You can also look at my PowerPoint 
and use my questions to guide your reading. Or you can always uh, write me an email to ask me questions. OK, see you next week. <laughs>